Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thank you for joining me. We're going to discuss the true epidemic of violence and how it's not at the hands of law-abiding gun owners, like what Joe Biden would have you believe, but is at the hands of governments, just like what he is, wants to do. So today is Yom HaShoah. Today is the day of remembrance marked out on the calendar for the Jewish victims of the Holocaust perpetuated at the hands of the Nazi party and their local outlets in Nazi-occupied territories during the lead up to World War II and during World War II. There are no accidents. There are no accidents. Today, as Joe Biden released his executive orders pertaining to braced pistols 80% lower, so-called ghost guns, advocacy for more red flag laws. I couldn't help but think there are no coincidences. Of all days, of all days, to release these executive orders had to be on the day that we remember in the calendar the victims of government perpetuated genocide. Governments don't just go after people. They serially disarm them using tactics such as what Joe Biden did today, such as what his lackeys in the Justice Department want to do, such as filth like what Chuck Schumer wants to do. Governments don't just come after people. They soften them up first. R.J. Rummel has a study, a tally, of how many people have been serially butchered in the last century alone by their governments. Anywhere between 170 to 300 million people, depending on how you want to count it. On the day that we remember the victims of the Holocaust, we also remember how it was that they were softened up for the slaughter with disarmament, with laws against their ownership, things like red flag laws, which are nothing more than just thawing tools of disarmament for political and social dissidents. Whatever institution is in power, red flag laws can be used to disarm them because it's for their safety, right? The epidemic of violence is not at the hands of law-abiding gun owners. The data bears out that it's in the hands of governments. Governments, whether legitimately or illegitimately ensconced in power via whatever democratic process or exercise of public discourse, governments, are the ones who perpetuate violence. Governments are the ones who are responsible for the epidemic of violence. The data bears it out. So on today, of course, looking back, I also look back at those who did not go like lambs to the slaughter. I look at black force partisan leaders. I look at the people who resisted the Nazis, the underground in every area that the Nazi party occupied. These people begged, borrowed, and stole whatever means necessary to resist a government that was butchering them. And they had to beg, borrow, and steal because they had been disarmed first via perfectly legitimate institutions of government. Institutions that had a mandate. We knew that Joe Biden and his ilk, President Potato Head, we knew that they were going to redo this eventually. It's what they wanted, it's what they promised. They want to come after assault weapons, so called. They want to come after more people for whatever reason possible. You know, create a national red flag law, <laughs> enforced, I'm certain, by a national government. I'm sure, or a branch of the national government. All of these we've seen before. And on today, Yom HaShoah, 
I remember people who resisted, as well as the people who were slaughtered. The people who resisted had to resist because they didn't resist earlier unconstitutional, unjust, and laws that were put in by duly elected governments which violated their natural rights. Since America has existed, people have had the right to manufacture firearms for their own use. Make no mistake, this government, while posturing at us and exist, issuing executive orders like what we saw today, they will not stop there. They are going to use an attempt to weaponize every facet of services within their grip, within their control, within their grid against the political dissidents of our time, meaning people who hold to constitutional values, people who hold their conscience captive to the Word of God, people who will not be swayed by whatever prevailing winds of non-binary social justice thinking they're being told to embrace or be called a bigot. Yom HaShoah the day of remembrance for Holocaust victims is the day that the Biden administration chooses to launch their executive orders against law-abiding people being able to defend themselves. There are no coincidences in divine planning, in the divine scheme of things. I look at the calendar and I look at these coincidences, no. This is a hint. It's a hint. There are no coincidences. These are going to be challenged, of course. Thank you to Gun Owners of America. And thank you to a couple channels in particular, Mr. Guns and Gear, who gave a really good heads up video yesterday, and also Jared with Guns and Gadgets. If y'all are not subscribed to them, you definitely should be subscribed to those channels. But friends, in the days to come, we need to focus on being self-sufficient. We need to focus on unhooking from a grit and a system that will be serially weaponized against us. Everything that the federal government has its hands in, they will attempt to use to penalize people who do not see things their way, people who want to hold to traditional and constitutional values, and the ways in which I think they're going to do this, not only, of course, with executive actions on firearms, but the way in which I think they're going to practically enforce this is by using the medical industrial complex and by using food. Both medicine and food have traditionally been weapons of war. Food is now, it was, and it always will be a weapon of war. From siege warfare in the Middle Ages to Somali warlords in the north of Africa, food is now, always was, always will be a weapon of war. If you own your food, if you have food stored up, if you have the ability to try and produce some of your own or involved in cultivation in some way, that is going to help make you more free. Medicine is now, it was, it always will be a weapon of war. To deny somebody this means to deny them combat effectiveness. If your people are sick, they're not capable of defending themselves. If you have an acute outbreak of illness within your camp, your security is not going to be what it needs to be. Being able to meet your needs without reference to what the political elite and the power structure expect of you, that's a very freeing thing. And it's something that we are going to have to embrace, I submit to you, moving forward in a world which is increasingly unstable and uncertain. There are many places that you can train. You can train with me. I made an online short course, four hours, it's $129. You can buy that at patriotnurseacademy.com. I also am doing in-person training classes in 2021. But I don't care if you train with me. I want you to get trained by somebody who is qualified to get you spun up and less dependent upon anything associated with these people in DC. They chose today of all days to release this. It is not a coincidence. The very 
same disarmament that they are posturing towards is the mechanism that was used to disarm people before the Shoah, before the Holocaust. Duly elected governments with the veil of legitimacy, disarming anyone, softening up anyone who would oppose them. That's how, among other things, but in particular, disarmament was one of the key reasons why the Holocaust happened. On today, I remember the people who did not submit as well. I remember the people who begged, borrowed, and stole, and did whatever was necessary to defend themselves, to liberate the captives, and ultimately to resist tyranny. When tyranny becomes the de facto rule of law, rebellion becomes necessary and indeed just. Any law that would violate the natural rights of man is no law. On today, of all days, President Potato Head and his ilk decided that's what they wanted to do. I hope it was helpful for y'all today. If you did enjoy the video, I hope you'll subscribe to me here on YouTube, Patriot Nurse. You can also stay with me and support me on Patreon, subscribe to our cryptocurrency and PayPal. I'll have links in the description box below. Guys, we need to be paying attention to dotting our I's and crossing our T's and having ourselves ready to go as best as possible. I hope you have a great weekend. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.